Hi right, guys, before we start with our new math lesson for today, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Alright? For today's video, we're going to talk about lesson 6.3 for my students. It's the probability of compound events or the probability of independent events. So in the previous video, we were able to talk about the probability of union of two events. So in this case, um, these are both probability of compound events, but the thing is we have to differentiate. So we, not, we have to know if what's the difference of each other. Right? So for the learning competencies, under the most essential learning competencies of the Department of Education, we have the following. We're going to illustrate independent, independent events and then we're going to solve problems involving probability. So one of these is just an additional. Okay? Now, probability of independent events, what do we mean by that? If A and B are independent events, so the probability that both events A and B occur is a product of their individual probabilities. So in this, in this case, if we're going to translate that into symbol, it's probability of the events A and B is equal to probability of events A intersection B. So we, are, we have the word and as an indicator that this one falls under independent events. Just remember that. When we say and, we are talking about both events A and B. Okay, and the symbol for that is the intersection because uh, it, is the one, it is the one that's common among the two events. Okay, so the operation also is multiplication. All we need to do is to multiply probability of event A times probability of event B. Okay, so just remember that the indicator for independent events or probability of independent events is the word and. How about for union? So in the previous lesson, we have probability of A union B. So union A in words is or. Okay, or. So the indicator that it falls under union of two events and you need to use the formula about union of two events is if you will be seeing the word or in the problem. But if we have the word and, it's different. So it means that we're going to talk about or we're going to use the formula under independent events. So just remember, one of the differences as well is that for the independent events, we're talking about both events A and B. Okay? And then for union, we are only talking about one of the events A and B. So those are two different things. For independent events, we're talking about both events. And then for union of two events, we're only talking about one, one of the events or one of the two events. So that's one of the differences of it uh, other than the indicators and, and or just remember that. Now, if this is the Venn diagram and this is the universal set, if we have events A and B, they have something in common in between. So it means that these events are what we call independent events. So in the previous lesson as well, we discussed that if two events have something in common, we call them mutually exclusive events. And then if they don't have something in common in the universal set, we call them mutually exclusive events. So hopefully that you are able to review the difference between a mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive. Non-mutually exclusive, they have something in common or intersection. And then for mutually exclusive events, they don't have something in common. Right, so let's proceed. Let's have the first example. A box contains three white chips and two black chips. Two chips are drawn at random from the box, one at a time with replacement. Find the probability that A, the first chip drawn is white, B, the second chip drawn is black, and C, the first chip drawn is white and the second chip drawn is black. So the universal set that we have here is the box and then we have two events white chips and then black chips. So we have three white chips and then two black two black chips. So if we're going to get the total, so it is three plus two equals five. So the number of favor, total number of favorable outcomes is five. Now, how are we going to know if this falls under probability of independent events? So that's the word N. So why do we have A and B? A and B here are what they call simple events. So simple events that we will be using in the third question. Because we need the probabilities of the, of the individual events. Alright, so before we can solve for letter C. Alright, so let's solve letter A. Probability 
Uh, the, the first ship drawn is white. So let's have a symbol W for white. So probability that it is white is equal to simple event, favorable over the total number of possible outcomes. So we have three white chips over the total equals five. And then we cannot anymore reduce this to lowest term. So therefore, three over five is equal to 60%. So either of the two, three over five or 60%. So it is most likely because it's more than 50%. Now for letter B, the second chip drawn is black. So in this case, we're going to use B or capital B for this. So how many black chips do we have? We have two. So two over five. So if we're going to, uh, how to convert percent? Uh, how to convert the fraction to percent? Just simply multiply the, if you have your calculators, just simply multiply two over five using the fractions, a fraction function. So 2 over 5 times 100, and then you will be getting the percent. So in this case, it's 40%. All right? So if you have questions and clarifications, most especially to my students, please don't hesitate to ask me. You know how. Then for letter C, we can now solve it. The first chip drawn is white, and the second chip drawn is black. So it, this is a problem under independent events. Okay, so therefore, we have probability of events W and events black. Okay, or in symbol is probability of W. Intersection black is equal to probability of event W times probability of event black. Okay, so and then if we're going to translate, if we're going to substitute, we are going to have 3 over 5 times 2 over 5. We're able to solve them earlier. Okay, so that's why I, I told you earlier that we're going to use the answers for letter A and B to letter C, right? And then all you need to do, if you have your calculators, just simply multiply 3 over 5 times 2 over 5, or simply multiply the numerators and denominators, okay? Just remember that. So 3 times 2 is 6, and then 5 times 5 is 25. So we have now the answer, which is 6 over 25. 6 over 25, or if you're going to translate this to percent and multiply it to 100, 6 over 25 times 100 is equal to 24%. Okay, so it's 24%. So the probability that you will get both white and black is 24% or 6 over 25. So I do hope that, it, that this, this is actually a very easy question. All you need to do first is to identify if it falls under independent events or union of two events before you go ahead in solving. Alright, so let's have number two. So here are the answers. They are correct. So for number two, the probability that Ramon will pass the board exam is 3 over 5 and the probability that Simon will pass the same board exam is 5 over 6. If each of them takes the board exam or takes the same board exam, find the probability that the board exam will be passed by both Ramon and Simon. So we have the word N. And let there be only one of them. When we say only one of them, the word or is E then. E then. So therefore, for the first question, this is independent event on independent events. And then for the second question, union of two events. So that you can see now the difference. How about the letter B teacher? There is no word such uh there's no word or so how did you know that uh, it falls under union of the events because of the word uh, because of this only one of them only one of them one of Ramon and Simon it's the same as the word or okay so you are choosing only one All right so here we don't have to solve for individual probabilities because for Simon will pass it's three over five and then for uh for Ramon will pass it's three over five and for Simon it's five over six so both Ramon and Simon so we can now translate this into Ramon, probability that Ramon will pass. Okay, intersection, probability of Simon will pass. So the operation is multiplication because it falls under independent events. Alright, so and then we are going to substitute the values. Ramon will pass is 3 over 5 times Simon will pass is 5 over 6. Okay, then the next thing is, of course, if you have your calculators, it's easy here for you to solve. Okay, so 3 over 5 times 5 over 6. So if you're going to solve it manually, 3 times 5 is 15, and then 5 times 6 is 30. So if you're going to reduce this to the lowest term, we're in the LCD is 15. 
we will divide the numerator and denominator to 15. We're going to have 1 over 2. Or this is very easy to convert to percent. 1 half means 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So the probability that both Ramon and Simon will pass the board exam is 50 percent or equally likely. Now let's have for letter B, only one of them. So other than the data that we have here, Ramon will pass and then Simon will pass, we also need the failing. So what's the chance of failing of the two? Okay, before we can solve for letter B. So in this case, we have to solve first the probability that Ramon will fail the other way around. And then the probability that Simon will fail. And then after that, okay, uh, we have to take note that in one whole, uh, so the chance there of failing, failing and passing is uh, are there in one, okay? So part of the one or the whole is the failing. So all we need to do is to subtract one minus chance of passing a prime or a mon is three over five. So we need to subtract so that we can get the chance of failing. And then for the second one, Simon will fail. It's one minus the chance of passing, which is five over six, so that we can get the part. So 1 minus 3 over 5 or 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5, subtract the numerator, it's 2 over 5. So the chance that Ramon will fail is 2 over 5. Okay, so 1 minus 5 over 6 or 6 over 6 minus 5 over 6, it's 1 over 6. The chance of Simon of failing, uh, the chance of Simon of failing is 1 over 6 and Ramon is 2 over 5. So we are able to solve now for the chance of failing. We can now solve for letter B, only one of them. So this is now the general formula. So the probability that Ramon will pass. Remember, this is union, so it means that we're going to add the two. So we'll pass, but for the, indiv for indiv uh, the individual, we need to multiply or because they are independent events. So the Ramon, Ramon will pass, intersection, Simon will fail. It's to multiply the two. Union, probability that Ramon will fail. Intersection, Simon will pass. Okay, so this is now the formula that we're going to use. Then the next thing we're going to simplify it now, or we're going to substitute the values rather. So Ramon will pass is 3 over 5. Just parenthesis. 3 over 5 times, because this is independent, okay, so it means that we are going to multiply. Here we're going to add. Okay, so 3 over 5, and then Simon will fail, is 1 over 6. Plus, okay, so Ramon will fail, is 2 over 5, times Simon will pass, it's 5 over 6. And then the, the next thing is we were going to simplify first the one in the parentheses. So 3 over 5 times 1 over 6. So 3 times 1 is 3 over 5 times 6, which is 30. So 3 over 30. Then 2 over 5 times 5 over 6. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 6 is 30. So 10 over 30. If we're going to reduce them to lowest term, this is 1 over 10 plus 10 over 30, which is also equal to 1 third. Then the next thing is we're going to add 3 plus 10 is 13 over 30. So we're going to consider this since the denominators are uh, the same, okay? So before you can add the denominators, not be the same. So 13 over 30, or we can say that in percent, 13 over 30 is equal to 43 percent, or it's less likely to happen that only one of them will pass. So it means uh, if we're going to interpret this, the chance of both of them is uh, passing is higher than one of them is passing. Okay. All right. So this is uh, quite uh, quite complicated, but if you will un try to understand the problem, it's very easy to solve. Okay. Let's proceed to example number three. What is the probability of picking a red card and a face card from a standard poker card? So in this case, guys, we have to simplify, or rather we have to simplify, or we have to solve for this rather, okay, by um, interpreting the cards or cards with 52 there, okay? So first, uh, we have the word and so this falls under independent events. 
So the chance of picking red card and face card. So we're going to solve first for the individual probability because they are not there. So probability of picking a red card is equal to in a standard deck of cards with 52 cards, so we have 26 red and then 26 black. So it's 26 over 52. So if you're going to reduce this to the lowest term, it's 26 over 52 or one half or 50%. So the chance of picking red card is 50%. Now let's have the chance of picking face cards. So how many face cards? For every We have four divisions. So for every division, we have three face cards, jack, queen, and king. Okay? So we have 4 times 3, we have 12 over 52. Okay, so this is 3 over 13. Okay, so 3 over 13, if we're going to translate this to percent, it is equal to 23%. So it's less likely to happen. Okay, then the next thing is we're going to solve. So probability of uh, getting a red card, intersection probability of getting a face card, so is equal to just simply multiply one half, uh, one half times three over thirteen. So one times three is three, and then two times thirteen is twenty six. Okay, so it's three over twenty six, and if we're going to convert this to percent, so this is twelve percent or less likely to happen. Okay, so the probability of get making a red card and a face card in a standard deck is twelve or 3 over 26. Okay? So if you have questions regarding these examples, please don't hesitate to ask. So just remember that you have to uh, check first the indicator if it is OR and N so that you'll know the formula. And then after that, you had to actually use the right formula in solving. Okay? So but first, uh, we have to solve first for the individual probabilities using your knowledge about solving for the probability of an event. Okay, so for my students, please don't forget to accomplish this activity, which we will be, which we, which you, you will be passing in the next meeting. All right. So for those uh, who are always supporting me, thank you so much. And then for those who are always watching, uh, for those who are not yet subscribed, please subscribe and then hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell for more na lessons. So thank you so much and may you have a good day.